Welcome back to Women's Weekly is. Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, Hello. relax, take that midweek break, talk about men just in time, right? Uh, hi, chat. Yep. <laughs> We're just talking about that. Man, diff technical difficulties on Wednesdays, but we know that's yes. how it goes for not just us, probably you. But <laughs> let's talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source. I'm Vince Stone. That's Joe Bryant. And... We got a new Pedro. Hello. Yeah, Pedro's not dead. <laughs> He's mostly the same. Um, still getting some bugs. Uh, you, you did a fantastic job with the reinforcement learning. You got to train the AI when you get it in. And uh, <laughs> did, did a fantastic job on the Morrowin. Oh, yes. Eh, I did a job on the Morrowin. It was all right. Uh, I mean, it, not quite as cheesy as the last model, but... Uh, It'll get there. It'll get there. <laughs> I'll catch my stride at some point. <laughs> It'll be a beautiful thing. Um, so, oh, a couple of notes before we get going. Uh, this will be, did a little test last week and I did it with Saturday and I'll be like, yay, this is great. If uh, you want like the uncut version of the show, you know, we do a live and uncut version, which you can get directly on Twitch or for Patreons, uh, it'll be like a week early on YouTube. We're also going to roll that out into a podcast form that you can do with your patron thing because you get a custom RSS feed that you can plug into your, um, or you can just download it directly. So that'll be audio only and that'll make some people happy. And mm -hmm. long as it, long as I remember Yay. to do it, <laughs> this is the big thing because I'm still kind of testing the system I have set up to get the audio recorded separately from everything else. So it'll end up recording like five hours worth of stuff and having to dig it out. It'll be kind of brilliant. That's what I'm up to. Also, Everyone buy capacitive gloves and forget that you have them. And never use them. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of brilliant. So what's new with you? Man? Oh, so I had a great time yesterday on Jupiter Broadcasting's Linux Unplugged. Actually, Chris Fisher recorded two episodes because they weren't going to be here next week. So that was a lot of fun. And just... Uh, being on the shows and talking to the wonderful community, which is our community as well. And I am preparing our Linux Chicks LA booth and our Linux Gamecast, yay, gathering and festivities and interviews at Scale 18X. So we've been heavily planning that. So <laughs> Glitter. Yes. <laughs> oh, tons, yeah. Tons of glitter. <laughs> <Tons>. <laughs> It's going to look like an art supply store vomited on cardboard. It's going to be brilliant. Oh, it's What's going to be so you, awesome. Pedro? They let you back in. They did, yeah. which was uh, surprising. Well, it wasn't. It, apparently, Brexit just got delayed again, so there's that. Mm. Uh, the, yeah, basically, ever since I got back, uh, thanks to... Um, well, mostly thanks to our Theron, I've been uh, very busy getting the Steambox 360 V2 ready to go. Mm. It's just waiting for a power supply now. You can see that Yay. Noctua fan used to be, um, you know, the Noctua colors, uh, brown color, and beige. Yes. <laughs> now it's black. Yes. And uh, you, what you see at the top there is a uh, low profile 1650, which was uh, that and the... Um, the riser that it's connected to were a uh, big courtesy of uh, Arthur, and so thank you very much for that. But yeah, it, it, I've been uh, busy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's start with Linux laptops. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. And this one, this is a Chalky Boy. Well, not really, but it is very, very powerful. And Ooh, uh, talking it's... earlier, man, I mean, considering the size of it, it's not terribly yeah uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, actually if you look at it it looks very familiar but this is not an intraware kratos no 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 this is the kubuntu focus it's actually being developed uh in conjunction with tuxedo computers uh, uh canonical kubuntu um basically the single most powerful laptop out there that comes with Kubuntu pre-installed. And that's a claim I am very comfortable making, but mostly because there aren't many uh, laptops out there that come with Kubuntu pre-installed. So there's that. Mm -hmm. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, and while we were uh, still setting up, I had a look through my Geekbench results, and as it turns out, those uh, Geekbench 4 and 5 scores are very similar to the i7-5820K that's currently in El Cheapo, in a much, much smaller um, 
uh, energy package because it's mm. laptop CPU, so it's always going to be far more efficient. But yeah, it performs very well for the the power that it's drawing, and of course, it's got a uh, chunky, chunky GPU, which. Well, you are going to be running KD, so you well, kind of need it. definitely a thing. What is the yeah. thing rocking? i 797 50 options mm -hmm. for the GeForce. Full HD 16.1 matte. That's important. IPS 144 hertz 1080p screen. Uh, display ports, USB-C, HDMI 2. And we do need to take a look at those configuration options. This yeah. is what you're going to yeah. do. This was a bit, okay. Nice. Uh, prepare yourself. <laughs> Uh, you don't want to throw it away. You can yeah. configure the RAM between 32 and 64. The graphics cards between 2060, 2070, mm, and a 2080. The warranty mm -hmm. between just two years and that. And that's it. Yeah, no, not a lot of options there. Yeah. Mm. No. And that price, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and what I found inter interesting is because they're they're so focused on the workflow of the computer and the, you know, end user, whether it be for multimedia, uh, playing um, games, and um, just general workflow with coding and uh, um, doing kernel development. And, you know, because of the workflow is such a huge focus, quote, of the Ubuntu focus, the terminal command RM, for instance, is remapped to trash to help avoid accidental data loss. I found that very, very interesting. It was actually very thoughtful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly yeah. they are putting in some work for people to, you know, target regular people, not just yeah. Linux nerds. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let's be honest, though. I mean, this, this is a laptop for Linux. You know, you, you know what you're doing. And oh, it's yeah. always good. We've said multiple mm -hmm. times. I mean, System76, they make great pieces of kit, but options are mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Always. Yeah. More, you can get this free shipping in Canada or the States. And there's an option. I think you have to order it through Tuxedo Computers. Is that correct? If you're in the EU. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> that is a thing. Not the only piece of hardware we get to talk about this week because the uh -huh. fine, fine pine farm, Braveheart, <laughs> has started shipping. What can you expect? It's pretty cool, man. Uh, we've mentioned this a billion times on the show, but $149.99, I'm probably going to end up getting one of these, man. This is from OMG Ubuntu.co.uk, all this in the show notes, but they are out. You can put them in your hands. Now, personally, I'm violently against carrying a mobile device in phone form factor. Give me a big tablet that I can use, I can do stuff in. This is going to support all major Linux distributions, such as, uh, well, phone distributions, let's go ahead and say that. Um, mm -hmm. Touch, <laughs> Sailfish OS, Plasma Mobile. Out of the box, you're going to be looking at 2 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, two cameras, Yay. and a USB-C port. Now, something that I don't see brought up as often because I know a lot of people were interested with this about <clears throat> being um, a privacy device simply because you can take mm -hmm. the back blade off and it's got road tip switches on the back that you can flip to disable, you know, just straight up murder your GPS or if you don't want the Wi-Fi's or Bluetooth's or the microphones or the cameras. You know, dun, dun, dun. And then you can give it to your friend. Maybe just disable one. <laughs> <laughs> so they hate you even more because you're a yeah. horrible person, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know uh, they say that the general uh, availability uh, for the sort of kind of final um, design of the phone will be in March and it will start shipping in April so mm -hmm. I'm gonna wait until the final one is out and then I might very well pick it up but um, you shared it on Twitter uh, last night Ven mm -hmm. and it was running XFC Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a, we might even be able yes. to take a, <laughs> take a yeah. of this <laughs> using a play. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do we have audio? Uh, yep. There it is. Yeah, uh, yeah. This beast. Yeah. Uh, yes. Juggernaut. <laughs> Elsa <Look> <laughs> <all>. mixer. <laughs> the Elsa mixer. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm going to cut that down, though, because tinny as that yeah. may be, um, 
Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool, man. This, this is not necessarily just because it's sex to see, but I, we've all wanted a little device like this. The only thing I'm worried yes. about. Yes. I'm, I'm not even worried about it. 149 bucks. Even if you save up for a little bit, that's in the thing of like, I'm going to be perfectly okay getting this, playing with it for a day or two, then like, here, you have this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I actually, I actually want one and I actually want one for my Steve husband in chat. I think he would love this phone. Because it's cheaper than and a jitterbug. You were talking about that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he, he's not there Dude, yet. But, yep, oh, yep. Yet. oh no. But but uh, and uh, speaking of WebOS, I really was really happy to hear that the um, WebOS, which is my favorite phone OS, Luna OS, um, which I also have on my OnePlus One, is also being ported to the Pine Phone um, as well as the Android-based Replicant OS. So and and that's what's cool on my pi on my um, one plus one I have all these distros so it's it's really nice to have a phone that that's coming out that will support all these distros out of the box <laughs> it's just awesome that's made to support those distros out of the box <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> I want to and I can yeah I can <laughs> I just, run Window Maker on it if I want <laughs> you can I mean that that's hundred percent that experience of like I can do this it's wholly impractical but look it's kind of neat yeah mainly to put sailfish os on there so i can be the other person that listens to our shows <laughs> there are now seven sailfish users in the world yes <laughs> okay uh let's get we're going to talk about wine normally when we talk about wine we talk about gaming but uh this is the non-gaming version of the yes. wine 5.9 mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, this is the stable version. This is the boring version, the one that people only install when it's brand new, like, you know, right now. Uh, and uh, Artherin actually submitted this as a suggestion for a story, so thank you very much. Um, yeah, this is the stable version. It's up to 5.0. And if you've been tracking the Steam, uh, not Steam, uh, the Wine <laughs> HQ um, <laughs> repo, you actually are already running the 5.0s, mostly because you've been running the RCs all the way up to now. Uh, but yes, it includes all the updates that were rolled into the 4. Point whatevs. Um, releases uh it supports vulcan 1.1 which is good because 1.2 nice. just came out so that's kind of necessary uh yeah. <laughs> there's been lots of care that was uh, put into compiling wine with um portable executables basically making sure all the dlls and all the exes are show up as portable executables instead of elves like the previous ones did because that'll help with copy protection there's been a lot of copy protection woes um, over the years uh, with the use of wine, so hopefully this will uh, improve on it, which may or may not have stemmed from Valve's work with Proton. Go figure. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I was really happy that now they officially have multi-monitor support in Wine 5.0. That, yay! Because for years I've been, you know, having to do workarounds to get my uh, to to everything from run my um, applications on three monitors and bit like video editors to uh, games. So now it's just going to make that much more easy instead instead of having to spend hours tweaking it. <laughs> to get it to work. <laughs> the important question we have to ask with this 5.0 release is will I finally be able to run all the Adobe products that I've never run in my entire life, but I'm going to tell you on the internet that I absolutely must be able to before I install Linux. Well, um, Photoshop's been kind of a thing. No, 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 I can't do it yeah. Even though I've never used them, Adobe. Nope, I can't use Linux. Sorry, Pedro. <laughs> I mean, uh, Photoshop works, Illustrator works. After Effects. Uh, I don't Premier, know about anything fine. else. I, I know about those two because those are the two ones that Nori uh, cares yeah. about. So, well, yeah, yeah, that, that's fine. But now, now that that works, I, I'm gonna I gotta wait for a native port. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Right, that's my native story. <laughs> okay. You know who you are, CentOS. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, the CentOS blog has a bit of an update. Uh, they have um, put out an update about the state of uh, CentOS Linux 8 and CentOS Stream. And at first it's like, CentOS Stream, what the heck is that? Mm -hmm. So I had a look, it's like, oh, 
it's a rolling release distro but yeah. that like in terms of package up to dateness it stands somewhere between scent and fedora and i think i kind of like that idea but the the blog itself is because they had a lot of retooling to do from the move from the base of uh, rhl7 to rhl8 so they're done with that tooling now, so once uh, 8.1 is released, the move to 8.2 and, you know, future work after that will be much smoother than it was up to this point, which is great to hear. Uh, and yes, I all of a sudden I was very, very curious about uh, CentOS Dream. Hmm. Yeah, that that was so cool. And I was really, um, what was really nice, they talked about how their transparency of workflow and giving the community a breakdown um, of their progress is now the CentOS team's commitment going forward. And that's very good because otherwise you don't think anything's going on with the project, like kind of what happened with the, the GIMP in the stable branch. Um, a lot was going on in the unstable, but not the stable. So it, it's really good to see this. <laughs> yep. That is very good. It's always good to get updates because CentOS mm -hmm. is definitely one of those projects like... Um, that no one thinks about how important it is until something blinks with it. Yeah. <laughs> then the world is. It was like, we're wholly reliant on this technology. It's like, kick him a few bucks when you think about it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Humbunto has oh. done something. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. So this is, this is huge. Yeah. Most is people aren't really going to care. Is it? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> So the Amazon Web App, which was first introduced in Ubuntu 12.10 and has been a part of the Ubuntu desktop for the past eight years, has been removed. Thanks to Canonical's Alan Thopey and the Ubuntu desktop director, Martin Wimpress. Yay! They keep Popey and Wimpy. Uh, yeah, when because <laughs> it's something no one used. And, you know, this is going to be, uh, you're going to notice it in Canonical's upcoming Ubuntu 20.04 LTS release, which lands in April. And, you know, this icon it really has been mostly used as an uh, Amazon affiliate link for Canonical. And, you know, personally, I, I literally haven't used the Amazon web launcher since the Unity days with Ubuntu 14.04, and then, yep. then maybe just twice. <laughs> so for those of you who will miss this, <laughs> Those few people who missed it, this, just save a shortcut of the web page to your desktop with any browser, and you can go and donate to Canonical via PayPal with uh, the link I have in the show notes. <laughs> so that's that's how you can solve that problem. <laughs> I, I, for one, am just happy that I can drop one of the packages from my initial um, sudo app yeah. remove whenever I do a fresh Ubuntu install. I mean, I still do sudo app remove apport star um, snap star, but I can remove the Ubuntu web launchers now, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty cool, man. I mean, the only problem I ever had with the Amazon bit uh, with that install is, of course, the internet being the internet, and then lost its mind when like oh my god you're trying to finance yourselves without showing us advertisements directly and i had the amazon search i'm like hey man people gotta make money i understand that the search lens was a bit eh. yeah yeah um, and which led to you know the only thing i think anyone had an issue with uh me personally i speak on the you know the um kingdom of vin was it wasn't opt-in yeah but, it was on mm -hmm. by default <laughs> it was on by yeah. default and it was a bit of a pain to rip out of the system. It wasn't like just uninstall yes. this. It's like, no, you want to install that, then make sure you uninstall this and have yourself a little bit over here and you want to uninstall that too. Um one of the reasons I, I like moved everything as oh Pedro, we've definitely talked about this here in the studio, except for Jackbox. That's still running 1804. I recommend that. Um to Debian was the need to de Ubuntu something. Mm -hmm after you yeah. had set it up. Now, what I'm saying about that is because I'm like, what do you mean? How are you speak ill? Is like most of the stuff that I would know from Orbit makes sense on a workstation because I need work. Everything in here is boring. That's where it doesn't have extra anything in it. And Canonical ships a lot of extra with Ubuntu. 
I mean, it's kind of heavy out of the box. So that's why, you know, I just rolled back from whence it came, Debian, mm -hmm. which is a lot lighter. But yeah, for, you know, yeah. the average user that just puts this on a laptop, then mm -hmm. yes, all that stuff that comes out of the box helps the laptop work better or helps more hardware work out of the box. So it makes sense in that respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Cool. Sad news. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this was, oh, yeah. this is our depressing uh, <laughs> news. Uh, <laughs> so Mozilla chair, chairwoman and interim CEO Mitchell Baker announced the company would lay off approximately 70 employees. Uh, so Mozilla had made money from Google and other companies by embedding, embedding their services into the Firefox browser, as a lot of you know. And in 2011, Mozilla j did just that. Um, they made just under 300 million a year by making Google's Fire Firefox's default search engine. So, but these sources of money, of money, unfortunately, are drying up. And, you know, it, they're, they're, they're trying to, um, with all their new wonderful security features and their, their, with their upcoming Firefox private network, they're going to try and make revenue that way. And, and I hope they do, uh, because we really need to see Firefox. We need that competitor to Chrome and uh, Chromium. So, and, you know, I actually am asking everyone, if you can, to donate to Mozilla. Um, I do every year via PayPal and help them out because I'm seeing that, you know, their numbers are decreasing in usage on Firefox. And it shouldn't be because it is one of the best browsers out there. And they've really come a long way. And it's it's just so sad to see this. <laughs> they, this is, I think the, one of the point of this is refocusing on the core product, which is the browser. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is a good thing. Yeah. Which, like, you know, hey, man, uh, we were trying a bunch of different things. We had a bunch of people to help out with those things. And we're going to, you know, focus back on what we're really, really good at. It's delivering a browser. And, you know, these things happen. And you do have to downsize when you laser beam with your focus. I really, you know, if we had the time machine, because we are living, there's definitely an alternate universe before where Firefox didn't become a massive, chunky, slow, bloated mess, which it did. Mm -hmm. Which it yeah. did. I love Firefox as much as the next person, but the reason Chrome was able to walk in, even on Windows, Firefox had that market share, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was still, Chrome was able to walk in because they're like, look, we're lightweight and we run stuff. And it did compared to what, what, what version was that? The 3X series of Firefox? Yeah. Yeah, the 3X were slow. Mm -hmm. It was around the time that the netbooks came into being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like you ran Chrome or any of the other Chromium-based ones that kind of popped up around it uh, on one of those Atom um, single-core processors. It's like, yeah, this runs good. You try to run Firefox. <laughs> but yeah, we were dealing with was... single-core CPUs at the time. But now, yeah. you know, with the, with the Quantum series, and so, I mean, it's a fantastic browser, and we do need it option yeah. b because everything else it's either going yes. to be firefox or chromium or yeah. chromium based or just regular chrome mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah vivaldi is um blink based uh, edge is blink based yeah. opera <laughs> blink based yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need that competitor. And I was sad, you know, when when they started focusing on Firefox OS, speaking of cell phones, that kind of drew their focus away from the browser. So it's it's good to actually have them just focus on the browser. <laughs> yep. So very good. It's going to be a thing. And it's, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. if you have a company that's uh, currently looking for a bunch of very talented developers, mm -hmm. well, I know of about 70 of them that could use yes. a job right about now. <laughs> Do you hear that, Microsoft? Yes. <laughs> I'm not even joking. You know you need It's a them. paycheck. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can help you. Yes. <laughs> Last but not mm. least, before we get on with the main section, is I have a little something. 
for my Ooh. fellow creator brothers and sisters out there. Yes. <laughs> People who like to make stuff and put it online. Well, seriously, I like to go on podcasting on Linux. So this is going to be covering something that, which I will demonstrate in the video if you want to go watch it, multi-track recording with OBS. And it's like, well, fine, I do that. Mm -hmm. I get my audio coming in. Then I get, it's like, now this is going to record your audio, your vocals separate from your music. Or if you have two vocals, you can do a vocal A, vocal B, because we can skip forward. This is what you're going to end up with. You're going to be able to go back and edit it in post. Mm -hmm. This is very important, especially like the one time there's a great demonstration in this video of how this can save you. Like, but, and if it does that one time, it's all worth it. But like if you're doing game capture or anything like that, you might have the game audio too low or you might be too loud. You, this is your time machine. This is very important. Now, you don't need anything fancy with this because I'm, I'm assuming I'm trying to do these. It is a little bit difficult in here to do that, but to simulate a what you would have at home, which I would assume a USB mic and a sound card external sound card. So if you have those two things currently, you can follow this, get this set up and go forth and make awesome stuff because I couldn't find a serviceable guide for doing this on Linux. So as is tradition. Yes. Past seven, Had to make eight, one. <laughs> nine, ten years. The internet now has one. It's quick. Yay. It's dirty. It's to the point. I don't spend the first 10 minutes talking about how my day went because I hate videos like that. <laughs> we get right into it and get right into it. So uh, I think I'm next. Up next in this series is probably going to be dealing with some hardware, actually setting up proper mix minus channels and maybe mm -hmm. setting up interfaces, all that fun stuff. I got to get an additional camera. That's going to be an expense and that's kind of pushed down until I get a capture, a new capture system. So, but it is in the works. It is in the works. Pedro, I expect to cool. use like 11 of those. <laughs> <laughs> I will use all the ones that uh, I can. <laughs> what do you think, Pedro? Do you just record everything down to one stereo pair? Is that how you roll? Uh, that's how I stream, yes. No, and I, I when stream, I how you record. This isn't for the streaming. only thing I record. Yeah, the only thing I record is game audio, and that just goes off of one stereo channel. Yeah. Have you ever thought about doing what the kids are doing, like um, talking over your game audio? <laughs> but it, it's just footage that you end up using for the reviews. No one's going to be listening to what I'm saying. <laughs> so what I should point out is this will allow you to stream that regular stream that you'd normally do. But if you mm -hmm. were recording a local copy, not only would you have the video, you would have your uh, audio and okay. your vocals separated from each other in that video container. So if you needed to go back mm -hmm. and tweak them up or anything like mm -hmm. that before you posted them, to YouTubes or anything like that. We're, we're talking about stuff Pedro's like, why I don't do any of that? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, you're the uh, production meister, so yeah. <laughs> That's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> you run the show, literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a lot sweeter than like, you do all that work. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> hey, if you would like to support all that work that we do, you can. Uh, if you want, you want to up our relationship, you know, just me, you, Jill, Pedro, maybe Jordan every <laughs> now and then. Uh, you can get some money in the game. You can do that. Uh, LinuxGameCast.com. We got a support tab. Go over that. We have Patreon. We have Libra Pay. If people are into that, we got merch. Hey, if you'd like to wear a shirt, we have those. Uh, do we have anything that's non-shirt related? We might have a pillowcase. PayPal. We got wish mm -hmm. loans uh, for the studio. If you pick up anything that we use to add to the production of this show or these series, you end up on the fine upstanding cannibal wall. Yes, that's what mm -hmm. it stands for, you dirty-minded human being. <laughs> on 3.0, we have Carl, Mike, and Basil, who's always yeah. like, just in that line, man. <laughs> yep. Can't quite make it up. Yes. <laughs> we can work down that. And uh, what else do we have? Uh, Jill, Jordan, Pedro, they have like wish list of like, I want pink things. Mostly Pedro. Mostly Pedro. <laughs> yes, look at all the pink things in my wish list. That said, yeah. though, uh, I do need to read because Arthur, as I yes. mentioned at the top of the show, he gave me the 1650 and the riser. So a uh, bit of a note. Hola, Pedro. Have fun with the Steambox 2.0, the horsening. All the worst, Arthur. 
P.S. Say hello to Nori. I did, in fact, say hello Aww. to Nori. She says hello back, Arthur. Aww. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you very much. We love you. We love you, Arthur. <laughs> that was uh, amazing. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> that is fantastic. Thank you, each and every one of you. Oh, also as a mm-hmm. patron, you get that custom RSS feed. If you want the extra stuff, you want to get some stuff. We try to sweeten the deal. We get you a little look. We're not big on putting things behind the paywall. One thing we do put is the mm-hmm. pre-pre super shows, in which is an extra hour of content that we invite people to participate in. That comes out in video and uh, audio form each and every week. But thank you for financing our shenanigans. And uh, yep. mm-hmm. let's keep doing some more 2020 because... We got a slice oh. of pie coming up. Oh, but we also Ooh. have a new patron to thank. Well, Jill, I thought you were going to get to it, but you know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, it, this person goes by the name Raspberry, but I wonder if it's a Frosty or a Frostclaw Raspberry. I, I don't know. <laughs> He's he uh, Frosty's a returning patron. And Frosty's so. Frosty uh, patron. <laughs> yeah, but okay. So this You're is someone new. I'm just going to assign people different names. Jill doesn't care, man. <laughs> I was like, how make up a name for it? You don't want to know what she calls Pedro. Aww. <laughs> what? <laughs> My friend Pedro. That, that That's not what you said to me, man. Um, <laughs> now that Pedro's back, be it all nice about it. But yes, Raspberry is our latest patron. Thank you. Thank you, Raspberry. Yes, thank, thank you so you much. Very By much. the way, if you haven't put two and 13 together, we, we'll, we'll give you a little shout out on the show. <laughs> yes. Also, like up your pledge. Make it right. I don't have do I have penguin rain on this one? No, I don't. Oh, uh, boo. Now now let's get into an additional slice of pie. That's what it says. It says slice of pie. I oh ooh, that's even more clever. I like that. Oh, I just realized that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> very good, pie, Ben. Uh, fakeness. <laughs> so this is interesting. Uh people have found fake raspberry pie cases online that are Can badly you molded. Because when you put them down, they just start rotating. You're like, oh, yeah, yes. just start... <laughs> if they levitate like that, they're fake. <laughs> and these are uh, badly molded knockoffs uh, to the originals, um, uh, the original white and raspberry uh, pink case. And these, of course, violate the Raspberry Pi Foundation's trademarks. And they're just, they're horribly done. Um, they're, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the the moldings are are too big um they're not you know uh they're not smoothed out nicely um the colors are off <laughs> they're just they're just all wrong <laughs> definitely and, uh, and yeah, yeah that bit about asking the ask, uh, asking the experts it's like you're straight up just telling the knockoff artists how to make a better knockoff what are you doing <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I'm thinking about like, they're not necessarily showing everybody how to make a better knockoff. There's like, this is what it would cost Mm -hmm. to do it right. And I don't think people making knockoff products are necessarily concerned about doing it right. They're about doing it cheap. Yeah. (laughs) Right. But they have like the uh, the mill cutters for making the really fine detail that those cases have. And it's like, yeah, if you have the sharp um, with uh, the sharp cuts with the rounded um, burrs at the end, uh, it looks much nicer. And if you have just a cylindrical um, uh, electrodes with sharp corners, then it doesn't look as good. So yeah, it's like, oh, so you just told them how to get better tooling for pretty cheap. <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> and, you know, this is also not good because the Raspberry Pi Foundation is a nonprofit that supports their work in education. And this is costing them lots of money that would be used to fund their charitable work. So, I mean, this is hor- horrific, actually. It's I, horrible. I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to save us that email. The Raspberry Pi, well, actually, Jill, um, <laughs> the Raspberry Pi Foundation is a not-for-profit. Mm-hmm. Not a non-profit. Not oh oh yeah uh, sorry <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just saving you that email, man. Okay. You want to, yes. You gotta understand because some people really, really, really will do that. Um, yes. Mm-hmm. What else do we have? Well, mm-hmm. uh, I suppose we have the one last bit of a pie story. Someone who's actually um, 
posted their story on Reddit about how they built a little uh, greenhouse on top of a massive little uh, water tank. They buried the water tank and then they built the greenhouse on top and then they put some koi fish to help uh, fertilize the, um, the plants in the greenhouse in said water tank. But they wanted a way to be able to monitor the little fishies. Somebody and took they, the cover off a C9... Then 920. A, possibly, yeah. ish. Logitech, you did it yourself. <laughs> Everything's a C920 now. I mean, that looks yeah. like a C920. <laughs> uh, and judging by the uh, quality of the pictures that he took of it uh, being underwater, yeah, it, it looks very much like a C920. Um, it's, yeah, it's a very ingenious way to basically make a watertight uh, enclosure for a camera that you can put in an aquarium. And then you can take pictures of the little fishies. Um, I, on, uh, this is a personal thing. I would have liked either a higher resolution camera, because yeah, 1920 by 1080 is fine, but something a bit higher. Uh, or if you're going to go with 1080p, get a wide angle camera. So you could put it right there in the corner and you could see the whole aquarium. That would have been yeah. even better. That could have been interesting, but I mean, I, I want like, I, I don't know, like um, autonomous, um, some like a little AI powered uh, neural <laughs> learning tartar sauce bot. It just goes around. Th this is why I don't own animals. It's for their own good. Just get the the Roomba brains and a Raspberry Pi and make a sub that once it bumps into the wall, it turns no, around. It's too much work. I'm just going to toss my Roomba into the aquarium and see what happens. It'll work itself out. <laughs> Zap all the koi. <laughs> oh, poor koi fish. Dude, um, that, that's interesting. I always like seeing, like, okay, let's just tear stuff apart and make a new thing. And underwater yeah. cases, <laughs> oh, ridiculous. Uh, my buddy, Dr. John, is he's into underwater photography, and I was over at his house. And the dude makes okay money. He's a college professor, university professor, and... I was like, oh, you showed me it's DSLR. Then you showed me his big transparent case for it. And he's like, how much do you think that costs? And I was like, 50 bucks. <laughs> I mean, it's plexiglass. When I looked at it, I was like, I could make that in an afternoon. He was like, that's a little over two grand. Okay, I wouldn't yeah. have said that much, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... I would have got for 200. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. So maybe you like dipping stuff underwater yourself and you won't <laughs> tell us about it. How can they do that? Best way to tell us about it is by using the contact form. Where's the contact form? It's on LuxGameCast.com. Can't read. Nope. YouTube.com. Yeah. That's where it's at. <laughs> it's very <laughs> difficult. But yeah, if you go to LuxGameCast.com, there's a contact button. There's a form there. Make sure you pick LWDW on the, um, mm -hmm. the box that shows up at the top. Fill out the rest. Send us your message. Send us your pie projects. Send us some really awesome uh, pictures of koi fish. <laughs> for some reason uh but you can you totally yeah. absolutely can or you can give us some feedback tell us um what it is <laughs> that you enjoy about the show what it is that you don't enjoy about the show seriously let us know uh, -huh. uh or you can do like orn did uh which is um uh, well uh you guys were talking about the um windows hmm. 7 um Windows Basically, 7 refugees. Yeah, the refugees. Yeah, refugees. Is that, that's the worst. <laughs> Statistical inaccuracy of somebody running Windows 7 and going, oh no, my license and support is up. Oh, let me go download a Linux ISO, put that on my thumb yeah. drive, format everything, move my data files over because I clearly have a backup because I'm still running Windows 7. Um, install <laughs> Linux, set up everything. Yeah, okay, maybe not. Pedro, read mm -hmm. it for me. <laughs> yeah, so Oren says, easy, easy, ah. <clears throat> Take two. Easy to use desktops are incredibly subjective and no users, especially Windows users, are not used to different desktop environments. <laughs> uh, people who are used to a Windows environment will not be all comf uh, at all comfortable using GNOME, Pantheon, or even Budgie. And no, not any modern Linux distribution will be perfect. You wouldn't make Windows users. Uh, bad use of the plural there. Uh, use Sabayon, would you? Unless you <laughs> hate them, that is. Uh, and 
Windows 7 users migrating to Linux is more or less a pipe dream, just like during the early Windows 8 or even Vista years. There will be some who will make the transition, but for the most part, they'll stay within the Windows ecosystem as these are the same users, as Van put it. Um, we'll keep using it till it becomes woefully unsupported by software vendors like the Windows XP users before them. Yup. <laughs> yeah <laughs> most people don't care what they're running on their computer yeah as long as there's a browser there for them to click on <laughs> as long as they so, can go on the internet and watch yeah. their cat videos or read their emails or do whatever it is that they do they don't care <laughs> yeah this, this is and one of the more unfortunate <laughs> yeah. And I was actually talking about what I was meant by different interfaces, Orn, is mobile. It, it's, you know, uh, tablets, phones, the Internet of Things. Um, uh, people are used to using other devices now, so they're, it's, it's a little easier now to move them over to um, um, Linux. But yeah, the majority of them are not. But <laughs> it's, <just, laughs> it's just easier. <laughs> well, the, the, the concept of a... a... I know. Listen, you're listening to a Linux podcast, and yeah, <laughs> we're in a bubble. Okay, yeah, yeah, we, we're in our <laughs> bubble, which is a small fraction of a still very niche bubble. People who still own desktop computers. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, exactly. I had to dose somebody exactly. with this, and we had to go to the Google <laughs> because they were, they were talking like PC gaming, and I was like, you understand. You understand, a PC game is a fractional minority compared to consoles. Yes. Like, yeah. Yeah. exactly. And mm -hmm. Laptops. Mm -hmm. You ask someone, it's like, so you have a computer? Yeah. Which laptop is it? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, well, that that's if you're lucky. We're talking about people that you know, that are your friends and part of your family. Like, no, everyone I know. It's like, mm -hmm. the, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is the thing. You do have to keep that in mind. And that person, they're, they're going to be on a touch device. It's going to be mobile. Ten years from now, the concept of... Yes. Like, that's ridiculous. No. They're, they're, uh, yes. <laughs> this will probably be here. But that's going to be in specialized <laughs> <Yes>. use cases, <laughs> yeah. like video editing, 3D, stuff that has, has yet to be moved over to you know, more portable devices. Of the cloud. The cloud as much as the man. term kind yeah. of irritates me. But uh, yes. yeah, <laughs> it, that's where everything is going, whether we like it or not. We let Google get yeah. to where they are. We let Microsoft get to where they are. We let Apple get to where they are. So there they are. Mm. That's yeah. it. Listen, man, cloud yeah. gaming is the future. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, so many Apple's of our doing young it. Apple is yeah. doing cloud gaming. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and our <laughs> young generation <laughs> is growing up with Chromebooks, so it, that's a thing. All the school districts have Chromebooks now, so <laughs> Chromebooks, Android phones, iPhones, exactly, yeah. <laughs> iOS, all of it. <laughs> Touch device. All right, beautiful people. Thanks for hanging out with us, man. Uh, yeah, we're out of here, but before that. We're going to roll some credits soon as if um, maybe I can get yes. some music on. <laughs> yes. Woo. There we go. There we go. Bye bye. It's sound. Click. Yeah. <laughs> Aww. Thank you to all our beautiful <laughs> executive producers. It's and very loud, guys. I am. <laughs> and and we had a bit of fire today. That was uh, that was a thing. We had some technical issues today. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, none of it was recorded. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> it will forever live uh, in the ether noodles of Twitch. Well, yes. till the end of the month, anyway. <laughs> Oh no, I highlight my code. Except, stuff now. except on my it. end where I missed a bit. <laughs> so. <laughs> 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 Bye, everyone.